to today's overview of chapter five in the social media marketing textbook. Today, we're going to be going over marketing with Instagram. And similar to the Facebook chapter, if you've already watched that video, we're just going to scroll through the various sections of the chapter. I'm going to stop and, and talk about some of the necessary elements that I think are important. Um, but for the most part, we're going to probably skip through a several sections similar to Facebook as well. I do think that there are some parts that are more relevant than others. And I do want to make sure that I give a broad overview of Instagram as it relates to this class um, and, and how it operates just as a, as a social media platform in general. So as you've probably caught on by now, the, all the uh, social media platform specific chapters have have all their have all their own um, the same same format. They start with an introduction, then you get into the numbers, then you get into marketing with it, and then how to create a profile, how to create a post, and then all these other things. So I'll skip through number the first section here a little bit, but I do want to talk a little bit about the numbers here. Um, when you think about Instagram, chances are you probably think it's a little bit heavier female and a little bit younger skewed, especially compared to Facebook. And those are true. So uh, that that's key. But then another thing to consider is the usage rates that it's really heavy uh, as skewed younger. The And by the way, these numbers do not match up with Facebook's. If you look at the Facebook chapter, you're going to see much smaller percentages across the board for all these different age groups. Um, Facebook, that was a breakdown of users in the in the sum of Facebook's users. So, you know, 100% of Facebook users, you had like what 18% of them were male between the ages of 18 and 24. Pretty small niche group. On the other hand, Instagram looks at these key demographics as percentages of a whole, like the world or the country or something. Um, for example, 72% of teenagers between the ages of 13 and 17 have an Instagram. Uh, people between the ages of 18 and 29, everybody, 67% of them have an Instagram, which is pretty shocking at how high those numbers are. And obviously it gets lower and lower as you get older and older with the age groups. Um, the big takeaway here is just Instagram is really popular. Instagram for years, not for years, for a couple of years was the number one downloaded app, most downloaded app in the app store um, and had the highest daily active usage rate amongst its users. Compare that to something like Twitter. The average usage rate is about five minutes. And uh, meanwhile, people get just get stuck in the scroll on Instagram and they just keep scrolling and scrolling. Now, how does marketing on Instagram work? Um, I was pretty surprised to see that 90% of Instagram users do in fact follow a business and that two in three of them will, well, this is a misleading thing. Two, two in three users surveyed say Instagram enables interaction with brands. Sure, you can comment on their posts at the end. Um, the, the third number was the thing that really got me. Half of Instagram users are more interested in a brand than they see ads for it on Instagram, which it, I think it's surprising because uh, that tells me that people aren't just blindly scrolling past, but that they're actually seeing content from brands that they might be interested in. And that takes us to the Instagram business profile. And I don't, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but this is one thing that is a little bit different than the Facebook page setup in that um, I would I would argue that Facebook business profiles are pretty important if for nothing else than the analytics that go with it. You get an immense amount of advanced analytics with an Instagram business account than you would with a personal account. In fact, there were reports coming out in the last over like right before COVID that like the business, the Instagram business profile came out um, like 2016, 2017. And uh, right after that, like the teenagers started creating Instagram business accounts for themselves so that they had better access to the analytics and so that they could better measure how successful and how much clout they had. And to me, that was pretty like stunning to see that 
teenagers had that type of analytical mindset, but at the same time, they were also just chasing the numbers. So um, it's pretty interesting because before this also, you had no data. You could only go back seven days on Instagram. All you had were likes. You had nothing else. And you had comments. You had likes and comments and shares. Now you're getting much more detailed data from Instagram and everything that goes on with an account. And I think, I think this is a pretty interesting dashboard that they've set up because um, you think about Facebook and until the recent updates with the Meta Business Suite came along, Facebook just was like, you want your analytics? Here's, an, here's, a, um, here's a spreadsheet. You can export it to Excel and do what you want at the end. And then on the flip side, you have Instagram, which now has all these pretty data visualizations, which I think are pretty nice. Um, they certainly help me from a bird's eye view. And it really, I believe, is um, probably one of the better native social media analytics packages available. Most companies don't rely on this. They have aggregators, schedulers, Hootsuite, Sprout, sites like that. Um, but if you're working natively with the analytics, I think this is pretty good. Now, if we look at an Instagram post and like what goes into it, there's a lot of different elements in a pretty basic image. Um, the video is, um, is obviously key, you know, reels are huge. Um, and at the same time, hashtags are still big. And it was interesting because, um, you know, this first post is interesting. Uh, you can have a lot of different hashtags on your post. Um, and you'll notice that the last sentence in that first point says, beyond 11 hashtags, engagement rates start to drop. That's because I don't know where this data comes from, but a study showed that the optimal number of hashtags to maximize your engagement was 11 on Instagram. <clears throat> and that could include anything, that, anything at all that's related to the image or the video that you're posting. As long, as long as the hashtag made sense and people would click on them, you were going to get plenty of engagements. It was pretty wild. Um, and if we keep looking at this, I'll just take a moment to look at these used hashtags. Just, I'm just going to pause for a second and just take a look. Now that I've given you at, uh, enough time here to look at this, do any of these make any sense to you? Back to school, sure. Fail, lovely. People, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, times, August, okay. Things that aren't in English, okay. So, several of these. Uh, what kind of forever, okay. That's uh, obviously what that's from. We you know what that's from. You know, International Dog Day, Happy Independence Day. Like it's it's all over the place, right? It is literally all over the place. And this to me, and hopefully to you, just shows you, goes to show that you can hashtag just about any word or phrase or any relatable piece of content that could uh, you know, get you another like or two. And it can't hurt your post. As long as, it, as it's within the 11, you are in good shape. Now, and here's some other examples. You know, of posts with a lot of uh, hashtags. Um, but also let's keep in mind that the idea of a, a regular Instagram post, an organic Instagram post cannot have a link. It can, but it won't link. And as a result, you have people that are doing the link and bio thing. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. Um, but the idea of links in, in organic Instagram posts, um, those are just not still not an option. Which means, uh, as a business, you have two. You have two directions you can go. One, you can um, you can do the link and bio thing, like what they're doing here. That works perfectly fine. I, I would you know I would recommend that sometimes. Sure. Uh, two, you can try the, uh, on the on the other side of things, just not putting any links. This is what I do. I don't put links, and instead just use Instagram as a brand awareness tool. The idea that you can drive a lot of sales or leads or anything with organic social media in general um, is kind of a dream at this point. Because organic social media, unless you have hundreds of thousands of followers, is primarily a brand awareness and brand equity tool. 
And Instagram is a great example of that. Sure, you can do it for customer service, you can use it to make announcements, you can use it for all sorts of things. But to put up an organic post and expect revenue, a lot of revenue to come from it, maybe you'll get a sale, you get a handful, sure. But the idea that organic social media can be a revenue driver for a business is becoming uh, less and less realistic. The reason is because all of these platforms are pushing their advertising. And they know that if they increase the opportunity for ad dollars to lead to sales, which they're doing, and decrease organic posts ability to lead to sales, which I think they're doing, they know that they'll make more money. People will spend more time with uh, advertising and trying to drive sales that way. Now, I think that is, you know, I, I don't like that in general, but at the same time, uh, I have come to grips with it because I also know that if I have people following me on Instagram, they're not following me to buy stuff. Maybe they're following me for the discounts, right? Sure. Well, you know, do one of these every, every couple of months. I'm sure it would do wonders. It probably leads to a couple of sales. Sure. But if this is like your main thing, you're probably going to be met with some resistance and a slow follower growth. Now, there is an Instagram shop. Um, there are ways to buy things directly on Instagram. But this is not organic, uh, organic Instagram content. I mean, it's essentially putting a store on Instagram. And you can do that. It's all perfectly fine, although... Um, the Instagram shopping button uh, was recently moved off from being kind of the central button at the footer of the app and instead moved elsewhere where um, it's, you know, it's not going to be as often used. I don't think they had this, that they've uh, decided, you know, on a permanent place when I know that they were testing some different things. Now, now I won't go into detail here on Instagram shopping, but it's there. You can buy and sell stuff on Instagram, make no mistake. Uh, but you don't want to confuse that with organic posts because when it comes to organic posts is where you want to think about the algorithm. How does Instagram rank all of this stuff? I personally have never seen an actual, I've never gone and bought anything on Instagram. So as a result, I don't see a lot of that type of content. But Instagram is... Um, starting to play more around with the feed and the reels, um, the explore tab. And us as, as consumers of Instagram, you know, we have over well over a billion users on Instagram right now. Um, we are the, the ones who are seeing this, being fed this new stuff that Instagram believes is going to be valuable to us. So as a business, <laughs> What can you create that you believe will actually provide value to people and not only in the eyes of the people, but in the eyes of Instagram and the algorithm? That's what this video is for, um, where you can show up on search and just do better in terms of getting your content seen. Now, if we go to the Instagram content strategy, some really good um, examples, examples of stuff here, um, how to do some different things. Uh, participating in viral trends, creating a reel with that? Absolutely. I've created a handful of reels just more as a test and also so that I could talk about it here. And I have found that whenever I use a trending um, song or a trending filter, you know, sometimes you like get a weird background or something, uh, my average views go through the roof. The average views on, on posts with on reels with those two things, either of those two things, um, I see about twice as many views. And the average view time is a little bit longer too. It's not just like, oh, I got 200 people that looked at my video for three seconds instead of 100. No, these people would generally watch at least half of the video, about 30 seconds. So um, if you have that opportunity and it fits within your brand strategy, I would highly recommend that. And the other thing is to consider, um, this is where Instagram, this is where influencers really started and took off. The idea of the Instagram influencer, the Instagram model, the Instagram whatever people, has been around for many years now and, and influencers, influencer marketing has become a really key element of any good social media strategy that encompasses both paid and organic. Getting influencers to use a product if it's on their own post is really gonna drive brand awareness through the roof, assuming that you're not already 
a household name. Now there's different levels of influencers from the millions of users, millions of uh, followers down to the couple thousand. And, and I won't go into details about that today because there's a whole another chapter about that. But at the same time, there is um, a lot of opportunity to use influencers first and foremost on Instagram. TikTok is a close second now, but um, if I'm looking at Instagram as an influencer marketing opportunity, that is number one. You'll see that there's more stuff here. Um, I don't, augmented reality, I'm not a huge fan of, but um, all of these different, uh, don't bother with the Apple Times, uh, visually appealing content, informative social posts. It's really a lot of the basic stuff. But again, this is meant to be more inspirational than just like it, most of this stuff you're going to look at and you're going to say, okay, obviously. But it's very good in terms of coming up, getting, helping you get some inspiration in terms of what's the type of content that you should be posting and how can you vary the content that's out there now. Again, I'll wrap up here with Instagram advertising. Uh, it is managed through the Meta Business Suite. If you were to create a Facebook ad, you will also get the opportunity to create an Instagram ad. And it all works very similar to Facebook. Um, and at the same time, the ad formats are a little bit different. I personally um, have seen the most success, success just with your traditional ad, ads over here in the center. The story advertisements, you've got to really stand out and capture attention instantly. And with the explore advertisement, um, you have to do much of the same. In the Explore tab, people are generally a little bit more weary of the ads popping up because there are so many. But it is to me a good advertising opportunity. And you know, if you can get, depending on what it is that you're promoting and it depends on your goals, um, I do think Instagram can lead to sales from the paid side, uh, just like I th think it can from the influencer side. Uh, but if all you want to do is drive brand awareness, you don't even need the ads. Instagram is gonna um, be a great place for you in general. And the one last thing I'll, I'll mention here is to remember from the business side, what you're posting and, and who you're posting it for. Um, a lot of businesses think that they can just take what they post on Insta on LinkedIn and Facebook and on their website and just slap it onto Instagram and they'll get a bazillion uh, engagements and likes. But people don't go on to Instagram to see that stuff. People go to Instagram to see their friends. They want to see visually stunning landscapes. They want to see funny videos. They don't want to see stuffy, uh, 10 point font, Times New Roman, you know, news announcements. And they don't want to see the, you know, product marketing videos from businesses. If they're going to, if when people see business content, they want to see the human side of businesses. They want to see behind the scenes. They want to see the culture that goes on. And they want to see the, the individuals that make that business run. And in these examples here on the ad formats, I think they're all great examples of what a business could and has done in terms of sharing content. Now, at the same time, it does need to be value driving and it needs to be authentic. And some of these ads obviously aren't going to do that. But from the organic side, Instagram for business is really a pivotal time. Um, but it's because it, it offers the business an opportunity to show people that the business is people too. It's not something that we often um, see. Most companies have not taken that big of a step. But those who have generally are rewarded. They get more followers. They get more engagements. Um, and they probably just get more out of their social media in general. But if you are a social media coordinator, manager, what have you, and you are tasked and you're told to just post on Instagram, whatever we post everywhere else, it's all the same stuff. That's where you're going to have problems. The, the worst performing in, uh, ad I've ever seen on Instagram was a Subway commercial that I had just seen on TV the night before. It was the same commercial. And I thought, sure, omni-channel marketing 101, right? Just get it, get the message in front of everybody. But it seemed so robotic and so corporate that it really kind of turned me off to the point where I was like, I'm going to use this in my class. And I'm going to talk about this when I lecture on what not to do because it was so bad. If Subway wanted to really take it to the next level, they would have brought in 
I don't know, a pro athlete, an influencer, a good spokesperson, and they would have done something that's not just about Subway Eat Fresh. And lo and behold, they did that in the last 18 months. That's about it here on the Instagram side. I just want to hop on my soapbox and talk a little bit about um, the value of that businesses can provide on Instagram and similar to Facebook. And you'll see as a, is going to be a recurring theme for these other channels that people on social media don't want to be given the same old business boilerplate. They want to see a unique, authentic side of a business that they're not going to get when they go to their website and they're not going to get when they walk through the office. They want something that's going to provide them tangible value. And that if there's one theme to take away in this course, it's that social media needs to provide value to the follower, to the viewer. And on Instagram, there's a very clear delineation between content that's valuable and is, is well-received and, and the content that's not. So that's all I will talk about today. I'll stop it there. Um, and you know, be sure to tune in next time. Sometimes I'll show my face here, sometimes I won't. Today I did not, just because I was having some microphone issues, but um, I will, we'll see you next time. Thank you.